red. Need some Grievous. Hopefully. This is my first time trying me being the one hosting the streaming setup, so hopefully everything looks okay and stays in focus. I got a pretty janky setup right now. But at least I'll be able to keep an eye on the chat. And figured I would start painting Grievous with the base because I'm probably going to need to dry brush some stuff onto this statue. And if I hit Grievous' legs while doing that, then it's not a big deal. But if I have him painted again. Grievous is really one of my favorite minis in the game, but he's really wobbly, and I feel like a lot of people's Grievouses are going to get broken. I think Kurt should be joining us. Welcome, everybody. Is anybody else painting or just here to hang out? I don't know if this base is going to be sort of... This statue feels like it's Jedi to me, but... This is going to do some sort of... I don't know if it's going to look like a desert or like a forest kind of my usual easy basing options. We'll figure that out later. Oh, sorry. Hey, I my Discord was deafened and muted. <laughs> Good thing I got an eye on the chat. What are you painting? Yes. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, it looks like... No. Nothing's coming through on the desktop audio, so no one can hear you. Let me see if I can try something real quick. Yeah. Um, is that how I go? It's definitely picking up other desktop noises, except for your voice. Um, but why would it be like that? I can capture Discord stuff, but... doesn't like add a new audio field for doing that. Maybe streamer mode is enabled. Whatever that means. Oh, let's disable that. Try say something again. Uh, still not seeing it on my uh, desktop audio visualizer. How does it work? But we did it before. 
want to try and I don't mm hmm can you do a Google my keyboard is inaccessible right now just Google why doesn't Streamlabs capture discord audio Meanwhile, I'll keep painting. Also, um, I guess I'll fill some air time while we troubleshoot. But uh, I ordered the Star Wars conversation cards, which is on some stores listed under toys and games, which I don't think it's a game. It's mostly just like a box of cards that have questions to you know, have at your cocktail parties. <laughs> but, um, they haven't come in yet, but I thought they would be good for this sort of thing. And I looked a couple up, so we can do that if people have a connection to me. Um, desktop audio device to speakers. Okay, try it now. Testing, yeah, testing. That works. Oh, okay. People should be able to hear you now. Then I will turn off my desktop audio. Because uh, now it's just... I just have a different output well, that's showing everything. Okay. Yeah, I just unmuted the stream and I'm like a hundred times louder than uh, you. How about now? Okay, let me try again. Can... We can use it as a um, a speech scrambler. You are not allowed to unmute it, but you still have to. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, I think those levels sound pretty or good enough, at least. So yeah, I think we're good now. Um. So what are you painting? Uh, I am cutting and gluing some Shatterpoint ladders. Grilling. You're just taking them off the sp sprue and gluing them? Well, and cutting off the mold lines. Did you leave mold lines on all of your ladder rungs? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, uh, pro probably not, <laughs> but I am less mold line picky, especially when it comes to things like ladders. Yeah, I mean, I probably should just do no work, but I don't know. What if some I, of them really stand out to me? I want to get them a little what cleaned if up. I painted this Jedi statue as like not a statue, but like a large person who has just been murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I can paint his face and paint his robes differently. I'm, yeah, like give I'm, him skin colored for his face. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I'm painting the um, the statue first because I figured I'll end up like doing some kind of dry brush on it, which will hit the feet and the legs and stuff. Yeah, I gotta say, I've seen a lot of really nice bases painted where the people uh, did not glue the figure on until later. I, I don't think I can stand doing it that way, but yeah, uh, I, I don't. You get some really nice base, like really nice looking bases that way, you know, because they can do like a crazy dry brush and all this stuff and like like a really like simple but very nicely painted base more than you can do when it's glued on. Yeah, I don't like. The only the first mini in a long a time to, I'm doing like yeah. step by step assembly for painting purposes is the um, ATST because I figured it's gonna be way easier to paint Chewbacca before I glue him into the ATST. 
Yeah. But other than, like, but this, I'm like, oh, I want to, you know, play, I'm going to have opportunities to play with this before I'll get it all painted. Yeah, exactly. I never paint something soon enough to put up with it not being glued together. And I, I, I just like can't stand gluing painted things together, you know, like it, I know the glue is going to like mess it up and I'm going to have to touch it up. And it's like, I just want it to be done. Even though it makes some things a little harder, I just always glue yeah. it first. A lot of guys with like their rifles in front of their chest and you're like, well, I guess I just don't pay yeah. into your, your chest. Very yeah. Much. I mean, at that point you can't really see it. So it's right. fine. For sure, for like good enough, like for my level of quality, and to be able to play it with, play with it, then that's good enough. I could understand if you're really trying to get like professional commission level or golden demon or something. Then I I could understand being more careful about it. But so for your grievous, um, do you have any plans uh, other than for the base? Do you have any plans for like the colors and stuff? Are you going to go pretty? standard like pretty movie think, accurate um i'm probably going to do it pretty um, standard I, I i just i like his colors i don't i can't think of any alternative colors that i would like more than the default except maybe yeah. just making the what's it called the like beige color or whatever may be making that even lighter so it leans more towards the gendy look where he's kind of a really light pretty much white gray or white yeah but i was think i don't know if it would be a good idea or not i was thinking of just painting all that color in the contrast color that i used to paint battle droids and then using that as a base highlight from that because then i might get a little bit of tonality and then I don't know if that would work or not. Maybe I shouldn't do it like that. And then basically highlight it a lot uh, with a lot lighter colors than you would for battle droids. Right. Yeah. And just go really yeah, far that's, on the highlights. But I don't. That's probably the easiest unless you go like pure white and just say, well, he's just white. I don't uh, know. I think he's, I'm, he's probably going to, I'm going to make him just look. The only thing I might change would be the cape colors, but I also just really like how his cape is. So yeah, the red. And I I don't want to like if anything. Oh, maybe I could give him like a purple lightsaber and a yellow lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I think that's fun. Although I I love on the the mini, you can see that the upper lightsabers are Anakin's and Obi Wan's. Yeah. Because in Revenge of the Sith, if you pause it, you can see. Because it's just the digital asset of those that they used. <laughs> Not that, you know, he stole the, their lightsabers. It's just, you know, they were just reusing 3D things. Lazy CGI people at it again. Yeah. And now they want unions. What have they ever done for film? <laughs> well, uh, base, all done. Um... So I'm going to dry brush it with some desert yellow. This isn't really yellow. Maybe I'll throw a brown wash on it and then yeah. leave it like that until I get to the end and do some highlights. Here. Here is uh, a conversation card. Okay. Um... If you could live on any Star Wars planet, where would you want to take up residence? Oh, man. That's kind of tough. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> I mean... Ooh. Imperial Naboo Bucket in the chat. says Naboo. That, I was waiting for you to answer, yeah, but that was also that's my fair. answer. Because Naboo, That's fair. it's got a great climate. Uh, it seems like it has good... There, there's a, a bit of like racial tension between the Gungans, it seems. But um, 
you know, it's just a society of artisans with, and I just want to like learn about the weird politics. Like, so we have a monarch, but they're democratically elected, but also like they're semi anonymous during the election process. It's crazy. I'd also pick One... Alderaan, but obviously that's very contingent on when I'm living there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, even for Naboo, the era or time period does make a difference, too. I don't know if we've really seen it that much post-Empire or, you know, like during the Empire, but I imagine it's not as good as it used to be. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's... Uh, Certainly for Gungans, I'm guessing it's not that good. Yeah, probably not for Gungans. For everybody else, it's probably one of the better places Maybe just to live normal? during the reign of the Empire. Yeah. You think they've kind of cracked down less there, maybe, or? Yeah, and there's probably, a lot of those rich planets tended to not see too much disruption in their way of life, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, Naboo's one of my top picks. For just like pure climate-wise, obviously the political situation would be rough, but uh, my first thought was Scarif, because like, man, that's some nice weather. (laughs) political yeah. situation would make it hard as far uh, as i the know Empire, at least for whatever reason scarif does it have populous like were there like cities and people living there because it seems like the place a lot of people would want to live but from what we've seen it's just like oh it's just uh there's a military base here and that's it i bet they genocided some people you know I, wanna, I mean, not were... every planet has to have cities. It could have just been right, but a planet like know. Scarif would, right? Yeah, it would be, you know, people. Yeah, people would want to live there, like you said. My next thought for like tropical, where the politics don't matter so much, would be Takodana. Yeah, Takodana you know, would be pretty chill. Nice little, like, basically anarchist commune with a bunch of like, uh, you know, underworld type. Yeah, I don't know how like, much of the ideals of anarchism exist there, with because anarchy is a lot about like mutual aid, and everyone there seems pretty, you know, selfish. <laughs> but uh, it'd be cool to visit Maz's castle. Buckethead says cabin yeah. on Endor depends on if I get electricity, mm. um, because I'm not gonna live the Ewok life. Yeah, I mean you could get. Uh, cannibalized if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah. Again, era dependent. Pre Return of the Jedi, big risk of being cannibalized. Not cannibalized, just eaten. Is in Star Wars is the it's term like a... cannibal like does that refer to just any intelligent being or... or same species? Yeah. Like if Bosk eats you, is that cannibalism or just eatemalism? Yeah. That's tough. I, I def- do feel like it's different from just being a meat eater, but maybe it needs a new term that's not cannibal. Right. A murder. Or some other murder bullism. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would not want to live on probably... Coruscant. Yeah, Coruscant definitely just agreed. Sounds... No thanks. Um, I just don't like big cities and maybe like Chandrilla. A more progressive city. I mean, what we see of Alderaan in the Kenobi show is really nice. They got like forests, like you know. Yeah, it's Alderaan all around. is. Yeah, it's and from what I've read, like Seattle, in, like Leia, Princess of Alderaan, and stuff. It's like a very progressive society too, where like yes, there's a monarchy, but that monarchy is basically all about like trying to improve the lives of the people and stuff, and not you know what actual monarchies are about. I guess Yavin is also, um, you know, tropical, but I feel like I it doesn't Yavin seem seems, like a nice tropical, you know, it seems like, seems like there'd be a lot of mosquitoes. And, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't have like beaches much that we've seen or some other random plant. I, this is kind of like a boring answer, but I remember really liking Dan when you go there on KOTOR, it's like, Oh, this is just like a nice. That is boring. cozy Midwest kind of planet. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't like that. Uh, what are some other random planets? 
Do you think Endor became like a tourist hotspot after the Battle of Endor? Like people like I want to see where the Emperor was killed or whatever. You know. Uh, I feel like no, because <laughs> you think the wreckage of the Death Star would have been way more picked over if that were the case. Because you yeah, know how tourists fair. be; they don't just look without touching. There's like okay, Ray's holding up the dagger. She's eyeballing, you know, the Sith, uh, where everything is. Whatever that stupid dagger works. Uh-huh. The camera pans over. There's like a tourist shop set up that just sells these daggers. They're just like <laughs> a collectible item. <laughs> like yeah, they reprint them every once in a while to like point to different the newest things. Yeah. wreckage. Yeah, yeah. As it shifts. <laughs> I like that. What are some other cool? There's lots of plants that I like in the story that I probably wouldn't live on. Oh, for sure. Like Felucia. Myself. Felucia, love that planet. Would never want to live there. Umbara, cool planet. Don't want to live there. Uh, Crate. Or even like. Crate is one of my favorite oh, plants. Yeah. Wouldn't live there. That'd be a cool destination to go to like check the caves out you know like just like a nice little how about uh uh what's it called uh batu galaxy's edge I just live at disneyland oh yeah i assume it's like nice climate and stuff what's that um it would be okay what's that planet they go to in bad batch where they like have to deal with like a tsunami where there's like nice. the one island yeah Besides the tsunami, yeah. that seemed pretty nice. Yeah, that place seemed really nice. Like a nice community that are like, yeah, we're all just hanging out and we're nice because we're all in Corona. Here. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be a good one. What planet would be the most likely place where you'd still get to play board games and have a good Hmm. Like okay, the nerdiest says no space planet. Horses. Okay. No space horses. We have to avoid uh, Keef <laughs> beer. I feel like Keef beer would have a good brewery scene. Like, get your Keef beer. Which one is Keef beer again? That's where the Death Star wreckage is. Oh yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, I was thinking of, I was thinking of, uh, the space horses on. I can't think of what they're called. Uh, on Canto Bite. Oh, the Fathiers? Fathiers. That, that's what I was thinking of for Space Horses. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Oh, Space uh, Horses no, I would... in the sequels. <laughs> yeah. I, I would not want to go to Canto Bite. It seems like a trash hole. Uh... Oh, yeah, where's where like... off? I, I already tried that in real life. <laughs> yeah. I can do it for a few months, but not uh year round. Um where would where would people play board games? Where's like the nerdiest planet? Uh I I mean like maybe like Ord Mantel. Like those hmm. that's where Omega became a gamer. Right? I don't know. I, you know, we don't. I feel like we don't see sort of like the casual side of Star Wars yeah. enough. It's kind of always there serious aren't... business. Yeah, there's no hobby gamers. It's always like gambling type gamers. Yeah, yeah. Except for uh, the only like hobby type games we see are in Resistance on the Colossus. Because um, there's some like mm-hmm. video type games in. What's her face is the uh, Doza, her room. She's got like a video game flight simulator. Oh, yeah. She yeah. has like fancy Game Boy type things. Yeah. T- Tora you... Doza? Yeah, Tora. I would not want to live on the Colossus. Yeah, no thanks. Um, hmm. I mean, 
Hakodana seems like sort of Minnesota planet, but I, I mean, Naboo still seems like my favorite. I can live in a city, but like, I, I don't know, unless only the rich people get to like chill on the lakes, I don't know. Still. What's the planet with Babu Freak? Uh... Navarro? Oh, uh, no. The actual Babu Freak. That's um, Kijimi. Kijimi. Again, one that might explode while you're on it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I. that's a planet I like, but wouldn't want to live on. Too cold. Yeah. It would be okay to visit. Uh, I don't know if there's a point to live there. Board game planet. Uh, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Trying to think of some deep cuts. Most Star Wars planets are not nice places to live. <laughs> They're like mostly wastelands where they where it's not even clear what their food source would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess Naboo is our winner. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're moving to Naboo. Here, here's a different card. Um, I'll have the full 150. I think they arrive tomorrow, but I'm just reading what I see on the little preview images. Which Star Wars character do you wish was your best friend? A lot of them. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I feel like you can't go wrong with like R2 or Chewie. Yeah, Chewie seems like the best best friend material. Yeah, as far as like loyalty and like gives good hugs. I'm gonna. This part of Grievous's cape, I didn't bother filling in because I thought it would look fine. But you see that like gap? Uh, yeah. I like that. Hopefully, it looks okay once it's all painted. But oh, is your camera mirrored? Uh, this is my left hand. I'm sticking out. Cause I could have sworn. Am I crazy? I thought my it seam must was be on mirrored the... because uh, oh, I'm holding yeah, up my yeah, left hand is. at the moment. Why is it? Oh, it I is. flipped it horizontally. Let me see if I can flip it <laughs> because my camera's facing. You know, it's looking at it from the other direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Now you see what I see. Because for a second, I was like, "Am I going crazy?" I could have sworn my cape seam was on the other side, and so yeah, it it was actually. So I was like, did I put the cape on wrong or something? <laughs> but no, yeah, that matches. Yeah, so I, I filled mine in with a little bit of liquid green stuff because it was like, it might have been fine, but I thought like the gap is just big enough that I thought it might drive me crazy. So I filled it in yeah. with a little green stuff. But that might be visible in its own way too. You know, there's always that risk that you kind of, I don't know, it's hard to get it perfect, right? Whatever. I will say it's a lot of uh, I'll live with it with painting these days, especially yeah. my the prime is so there's such a texture on it right now. I don't know if that's just the paint I have or because I was like 90 when I primed this. Because I like really powdery pebbly. Yeah, I mean, it's not like super it bad. It doesn't really come through once I'm done painting it, but it still sucks. It, it was like I haven't had like a smooth application of a primer in a long time because I'm like I gotta wake up at six thirty and go outside and prime it while it's still, you know, below ninety degrees. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that uh, honestly, as far as like the gaps and things go, um, I feel like they've actually been less bad for me mostly on Shatterpoint minis than on Legion ones, honestly. Imperial Buckethead For whatever says, reason. did you guys go to Gen Con? Uh, I did once. It wasn't this year. <laughs> uh, Evan, <laughs> I thought Evan might be popping in to chat, but 
I guess not. Um, he went to Gen Con. He got to demo uh, Star Wars Unlimited. Star Wars Unlimited. Yeah, I really want to go. Like, I usually I'm very fine about not doing things that other people are doing, and this year I was like, oh, I really wish I was at Gen Con. Maybe it'll be better next year. Definitely want to go some year, you know. Yeah, but I I don't know when I'll feel comfortable enough because I don't want to get sick and I kind of hate air travel and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah but someday I just need to get too many because right now I'm trying to save up for Adepticon unless they rescind my world's invite <laughs> Remy B finished Grievous earlier today oh wow. Yeah, it's, like, even just painting is, I know what you mean, there's not a good way to, like, get at all the parts, and when you, whenever painting... Just sticks out in every direction and everything. Yeah, when I paint the cape, he just wiggles, and he, I feel like he's going to snap off at the waist <laughs> or something. You almost got to, like, support the underside of the cape with your thumb. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all pretty excited about Unlimited. I am... Yeah, I guess we, we haven't had a chance to really like talk in depth to Evan uh, post Gen Con yet, but I'm curious to... I don't think he really said like what he thought about it after playing it, you know? Yeah. And I feel like he's... We like, have like the interview. The second but... level of like card gamer of us. I, I, Leo's the card game guy, but I feel like Evan has played more than I haven't done too many Probably. games. Probably. Uh, sure, it looks cool, though. Is there was be, like... Do I want oh, to paint the symbol on his cape? It's so big, I feel like it'll be really oh. like, obvious if I don't paint it. But also, with you know the way it's contoured, it feels like it'll be hard to, like, you know... My brain can't like projection map that 2D image onto this folded surface. I forgot he had a symbol. What is it? It's not a separatist logo, is it? No, it's like a big middle finger. Weird. No, I don't know what it is, but it's a there's weird kind of claw symbol. thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I forgot about that. I did not paint it on my Legion one, I don't think. I don't think I did either. Seems like would be a lot of work. Yeah, I, I don't even have an idea of how I want to paint my Grievous yet. I know I'm not going to get to it soon. I kind of don't really want to paint him the same way as I did my Legion one is a thing. You know, I kind of get tired of being like, oh, I just painted the same guy again, and it's the same. I kind of want to try something different on each one. Are you gonna, I don't know what that would be. Speaking of that, are you going to paint your Vader differently? It's so It feels pretty weird to not just paint Vader, Vader. But also, it's like, he's the character in a <laughs> miniatures game that we've all had to paint way too many times. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I would definitely be less likely to paint him. He would look so weird alternate. I think that I haven't seen many alternate ones that I liked. But, yeah, I'm not going to want him to paint him just, like, normal. <laughs> if I can at least, like, figure out some type of pose mod or something, like, maybe that will be different enough. But I doubt he's that modable. I'm trying to think what his pose will be like in the, uh, in his full pack. I don't remember what it is. Um, I don't either. Just kind of walking? I mean, the pictures, I mean, there he was on display at Gen Con, and we've got pictures. I don't remember what it is. Mm. I will look it up in a second. <sighs> okay, base colors on the cape done. I I guess I'll dark gray is looking good. Use the same dark gray for all the gray bits on his body. So 
Like, a lot of people I see do, like, white Grievous with black cape and red lightsabers. And I'm like, well, that looks kind of cool, but mm -hmm. part of what makes Grievous look like Grievous to me is, like, the multicolored lightsabers. Yeah. And, like, the red lightsabers makes me go, well, he's not... He wishes he could have a red lightsaber, but he can't. <laughs> yeah. That would be really awesome if he had one red one that would be like, ooh, who did he kill to get that? That would be, like, a cool story but yeah like you said um for, for my legion one i did one purple and one yellow and i thought oh that's kind of cool that's a little different but then i painted the rest of him like very standard i would say what would be some other cool ones bring up a picture of this grievous black series I think I might be, rather than using contrast paint, I'll just paint it a really light color. So I'll do it with a brown wash and then highlight that. So I can make this Black Series figure. Because Grievous actually has very few colors compared to a lot of other characters. Mm -hmm. And even like where he does have color, like his guts are all like in some kind of green fluid sack. The, none of the. Yeah. There's nowhere to like put that on the mini unless and if I I feel like if I did that in the little groove on his chest it would not look like what it's supposed to look like. Actually, this black series figure I'm looking at his chest is looks extremely different from what's on this mini. Does he have like a different torso? in the animated shows than he does in the movie because what i'm looking at he's got two of the pale bone colored things that's you you, you know where obi-wan grabbed it and pulled it open mm -hmm. like saloon doors and there's nothing like that on this mini it's mm. like a solid piece there's no like split down the middle it's obi-wan proof mm. <laughs> yeah, this is the new improved Grievous uh, post Utapau when they uh, rebuilt him. It's even less organic matter. Oh, nice. Remy yeah, I mean, like they, they they gave him a, a red lightsaber. Oh, I bet that looks cool. I mean, like when you think about it, with Grievous's death, like why couldn't they rebuild him? Like. He's already got mostly cyborg organs, so some of them were burned up. Whatever. Who cares? Um, Just, like, reboot him. I feel like you're discounting the importance of his brain. <laughs> Which clearly, like, incinerated and blasted out his eyes. <laughs> Maybe, he, but he is an alien, so, you know, he... I don't know. He doesn't have the same weaknesses a human has, maybe, for all we know. It would be so easy to justify. Um, they did that in uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Oh, yeah. There, it wasn't like him back, but there was like a new line of droids that was basically the game's excuse to let you fight General Grievous. It was like oh, yeah, just yeah. him, different color. And by the way, it's just a droid based on this guy who lived a long time ago. You know, I would like to see uh, more of the spider robot guy from Mando Season 3. That was very grievous looking to me. Like, why not have some more crazy weird spider robo boys? Because... Maybe it's Grievous's brother. Spider robo boys need to be made with computers. And people are afraid of computer generated characters. Producers are afraid of it. Audiences are afraid of it. Remember when they made Maz Kanata into a puppet that looked worse than the <laughs> CG version? I think, in, in my head canon, Grievous comes back from the death. <laughs> from the death. <laughs> from, from, the, from the dead. <laughs> what happens is... Uh, his brother, who would be named General, 
Like what's a upsetty? Like a a synonym for <laughs> grievous? Like severe? <laughs> Captain severe. <laughs> severe gravas. Something like that. You know what I mean? Like it would. Uh, and he would be. I don't think grievous is his given name. I think he, like, chose it. <laughs> Well, doesn't matter. <laughs> His brother, who looks a, a lot like General Grievous, but he's more muscular and he's uh, yellow instead of red. Okay, uh, I like this. This has got a lot of promise. <laughs> Very original idea. Yeah. And then he finds Grievous's, uh, like body. Grievous has still been alive this whole time. He never actually died. Ooh. And... Um, uh, they rebuilt him, and then they go on like a crime spree together, or something like that. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, I could see that, and like, but it's you could really take just over to, a planet or something. It's really probably, just to like, fund um, Grievous's desire for revenge on Obi Wan Kenobi. That's really what drives yeah. Grievous. Like his brother, Severe. Uh, you know, he's just like wants to have a brother and impress him, but Grievous, you know, he's like, I just want Kenobi. I think that could be yeah, a storyline that worked. There's like an interesting <laughs> dynamic there, right? Because it's like, you know, he's not, he doesn't treat his brother that nice, but his brother kind of like seems to love him. And you're kind of like, Do, should I root for these guys? Or are they kind of bad guys? I don't know. The I think you, it, and you could have them like take over a planet that we haven't like seen a lot in Star Wars too. So it'd be like a cool excuse to see like maybe they take over Nal Hut or, or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they do, you know, crime stuff. They since they're on Nal Hutta, they'll probably, you know, fight the Hut clans and And yeah, agreed about him like looking for Obi Wan because then it's like you set up like this interesting kind of dynamic there too. Like, is he gonna find Obi Wan? Now that Obi Wan's older you know, how's how's the duel going to go this time? Could go, you know, a number of ways. Yeah, man, missed opportunities. So, speaking of reviving characters from the dead, mm -hmm. so that's something, despite um, the characters who got taken back from the dead, like Maul and Echo and stuff, despite their continued aliveness, generating very good stories that I enjoy. I always got annoyed when they weren't dead. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really make sense, per se. It's kind of like a lazy writing thing. It's like comic book writing. Like, can't we just bring back the guy we liked? We, we haven't seen the guy we liked in a while. Can't we just have him not yeah, be dead anymore? I, you know, like, even, like... Admiral Trench. It's just like, here's just yeah. some guy who should be super dead, but he's not. And I'm like, okay, why is he alive? But I guess he dies real fast anyways. Would love Admiral Trench mm. for Shatterpoint. Oh, yeah. That cool... would be great. With the robo-arms, even. Yeah. And it's like, he's cool. I like to have more of him. I like his new robot arms and his robot uh, mouth part. There's this. There's called. a... Oh, I was like, there's... Grievous's shin piece is missing. It, I s knocked it off with <laughs> my brush or something. I gotta glue that on. Wow. How did that happen? Let How me did down that plastic happen? glue. I was worried for a second. I'm like, did I miss a piece? Because all that plastic, all the sprues are, you know, in the landfill now. <laughs> um, but I would be totally okay with all of that again if they brought Ventress back. Exactly what I was going to say, 100%. I mean, I think she would be easier to justify than some, because I feel like her death is a little less canon in my mind. It's some dumb book that would be like so <laughs> easy to wreck on. It's uh, not even like a popular book, is it? Like, who cares about that book? For, it's Just on my wall. Rick on it. Uh, I think people tend to quite like that book. Ugh. But also, uh, yeah, whatever. Just do it, because it's... Such a waste for on, her to Dave be Filoni. dead for such a dumb reason. 
Come on. Uh, well, Dave Filoni's Katie Lucas. Or no, whoever wrote that. She's the yeah. She's we. She's out of here. Just Dave, <laughs> do what you do and ignore all the things that people wrote based on your stories, like the Ahsoka novel, where it's just like, oh, I'll just do this again in my little Tales of the Jedi and like overwrite this, even though that's not how Star Wars is supposed to work these days, but. Yeah, he he learned from George on that. Yeah, the uh, just don't give a shit about what other people <laughs> just, do. Just do your own thing. Yeah, Ventress ever... would definitely be like the number one I would want to like bring back in some way. It's like such a waste of a character. Otherwise. And like, it's all, it's such a waste because who, <laughs> I do not understand who likes Quinlan Voss. Why did he need this great redemption arc, whatever, Bridges' girlfriend, all this stuff. He, he, Nobody we've never even Quinlan seen him. Voss. Yeah. He's such a D bag and he's, he's a bad Jedi. Like, it's not like they've done anything with Quinlan Voss post that story right so like why um, did they have to like save him technically we, we we had the name drop in kenobi yeah but like other than that still out he hasn't somewhere. done anything yeah the least cool of the prequel jedi because he might as well have been like riding a skateboard <laughs> hello fellow kids um buckethead says i vote dash rendar in lebo for shatterpoint Oh man, yes. Oh god. That would be cool. I mean, I think it I agree it would be cool, but I don't know if I'd be like into it. <laughs> <laughs> like I it's just always cool to me when they pick things from sources I don't expect. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I like Dash Rendar and Lebo. Yeah, I feel like Dash Rendar is, I mean, if you go read the actual uh, novel from uh, Shadows of the Empire, he's such a D-bag. He sucks so much. He's like this huge jock and he's dumb. <laughs> but, you know, I, he's the type of character that I bet if they brought him back into canon, they would make him a lot cooler, you know? Mm -hmm. And Lebo, Lebo's done nothing wrong. Lebo's cool. They got a cool ship, and the ship is canon. Yeah. Well, the Outriders, the model of the ship is canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to look. Well, up. I don't know. I don't know though. Isn't the Outrider in? Uh, isn't that the flip side in Outer Rim? Unfinished business. That makes it canon in my mind. I mean, yeah, canon. Closer to canon than it would otherwise be. Yeah. Like, it means it had to be approved by somebody at Lucasfilm. I need to... My keyboard is... How do I search for another picture of Grievous without <laughs> my keyboard? I do have buttons on my phone? mouse. But I need it up on my screen. I have mm. buttons on my mouse that are um, dedicated to copy and pasting. So if I can just find the letter G in one of these URLs. <laughs> can, can you find the oh, name yeah. Grievous? I found, I found the name Grievous from... in one of these other pictures I have. up. There we go. I was going to say, we agreed on what character to bring back from the dead. Oh, there we go. Um, so, so for what it's worth, the... The miniature is based on the Clone Wars version, who has a relatively different torso configuration than the live-action version. Hmm. <laughs> he does have the split down the middle that I was talking about, but they're, like, touching. And the miniature oh. barely even has, like... A seam. A seam there. Um, interesting. Okay, anyways. Oh, yeah, so I was saying we agreed on what character character to bring back from the dead. So then my next question, I have my own deck of cards. That's what you're 
missing wow. these uh, question prompts. Um, Wait, but hold on. Before you go, we got to catch up on the chat. Imperial okay. Buckethead loves Dash. He was more kick ass in the Dark Horse comic adaptation. Mm. I, maybe I read that one. I, or in the video be... game. Oh. Yeah, I, I haven't played the entirety of the video game, but I've probably read the comic at one point. But all I remember is Flat Top Chewy and. <laughs> yeah. Sexual Assault Lizard. Yeah. Um, Outriders and X Wing just got re released. Oh, yeah, they did just come out with that again. Nice. Maybe that mysterious Ahsoka Inquisitor is Asajj? Nope. Give us hope. Doesn't that person have so. a. I think they already have a name. It's like Murak or something. Which, I mean, it could be an alias. Maybe that's her Sith. Whatever. Wait a not minute. Sith, whatever they're called. She is. I don't know. Uh, alive if you have seen the um totally canon clumsy and random episode fucko's big adventure <laughs> she can find on our youtube <laughs> channel yes. f-u-k-o but... fucko the ewok he met uh asajj who is like living in sort of a witness protection situation <laughs> it's absolutely canon yeah kathleen kenny did Kathleen Kennedy does not want you to know about this very true lore. Filoni's trying to cover it up with these bad novels they're releasing. <laughs> uh, I forgot what we were even saying. You Something were saying we picked Rendar. who to come back from the dead. Oh, uh, so, okay, yeah, Dash Rendar got me thinking. What old canon character would you bring into new canon? You know, like Mara Jade. They've obviously already done it with like Thrawn and a bunch of other characters. Jackson. Who would be yours? The important ones, Thrawn and Jackson. Yeah. He was in it was Jackson. the Fakpov, right? Yeah. Jackson's in a number of things. He's in some of the comics. Uh, he was in one of the Forces of Destiny cartoons. Um, he's he's in enough things now where you you I don't know if you could even count it on one hand. Um, yeah. Jackson. What about so one of my favorite characters is Zane Karak, but that involves bringing him into canon from Legends involves a lot more than just whatever because he's from the Old Republic comics. I forget. I don't think I know who that is. He was the main character of the Knights of the Old Republic comics, which were just sort of adjacent to the video games, and his deal was basically he was like sort of a like kind of a klutz padawan like yo zane he's always screwing up and he's late for like jedi padawan initiation day or something like that and uh when he gets there the jedi masters have like killed all the other padawans because you know, they got some kind of prophecy that this had to be done to maintain, like, balance in the force or something. And he's so like... they just immediately did it. They're like, well... I think enough. they, like, had been, like, uh, <laughs> thinking about it. it for a while. They're like, oh, this is yeah. pretty messed up. They're like, yeah, but we all got the visions, man. Um, I don't so... think that's a good enough reason. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he, you know, nopes out and then goes on adventures with uh, non-Jedi people. Imperial Buckethead in the chat says Johto cast that maybe should have been an oh, obvious one okay. for us. How did we? Oops. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? if he came back, we're already sitting on a great name. Suddenly, we get yeah. a lot more viewers. I'm sure. <laughs> also, I would want him to be the version of Johto cast that sort of exists in our heads as our mascot, just sort of a loser. Um, not he's that he's not a goofy. loser in the comics, but yeah, he's. He's more pathetic in the comics and well, he's pathetic for us too, but he's more, he's more like a lovable pathetic where he's kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, my serious answer though would be Kyle Katarn because I love the Jedi Knight games. You know, I don't know how to fit him in. I mean, he would definitely have to be, but... cause like he's such a, like Legends video game character where it's like, I'm a Han Solo and a Luke Skywalker. I can do bad things. I can do good things. I'm kind of yeah, guitar. Exactly. Like, doesn't 
as is. I think you have to throw out a lot of that. I don't think you can really keep him that similar. But if you like go back to basics with him, I don't. I mean, I don't really have a reason for liking him other than I liked the games. Right? He doesn't really have that much character to him other than he's like, I'm gonna do the plot of the game now. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta sit like. Even if they brought him back, I don't think they would need to keep like the Jedi stuff. Just like keep him as a spy. But still, what if... his like Jedi arc in the Jedi Knight game was just like such a good one. It was like it always stands out so vividly in my memory. How he like finds the like the data disc and he starts to learn. He gets the lightsaber and all this stuff. It like feel it's like such a good Jedi story. You know, he could be a Jedi youngling either at Luke's academy and he gets murdered. <laughs> or he could be a new Jedi in like the future, like post Rise of Skywalker. Or not. He's like uh the closest he is to being canon at the moment is technically clone commando armor is called Katarn class armor. Which but I think that's named after the animal, animal, right? Is that an animal? A katarn? Yeah, it's like some kind of... I feel like it's like a wolf or something. Huh. I don't know if his name came first or if the animal came first. I thought it first, was a what? Japanese sword. You got down there one of them katarns? I got it from the mall? Um, that made me think of like... Okay, so you know how like so many like Marines or whoever came back from World War II like... I found me one of them ninja swords. I'm going to keep this in my <laughs> barn. Yeah. I'm going to sharpen it with my angle grinder. Right? Okay, sure. Fair okay, enough. so do you think clones are, like, stealing lightsabers of the Jedi they killed and, like, keeping them after they retire and stuff, passing them down to their half-clone babies? Um, Like, whatever happened to those lightsabers? Cool. Those are cool around somewhere, was, you know? You know, a character... In the Mando or sequel era, who's like the child of a clone and just inherited like war spoil lightsaber. Yeah. Especially if you were on cool. Utapau, the guys who cleaned up Grievous's corpse, they must have found so many lightsabers. Oh, wow. Yeah, good point. And before they could, you know, send them back to the Jedi Temple, which was probably protocol, Order 66 happened and they go, well, we don't care about the Jedi anymore. We've got a, you know, a box full of. Maybe he only had like six on him. He probably had a bunch more at like his but still unless okay what if part of order 66 there's like a sub clause that's like okay <laughs> and also pick up any of their lightsabers after you kill them and bring them back to me the emperor you know um there is in the vader comic shortly after the rise of the empire a public um it almost seems like a nazi book burning but they're chucking lightsabers into an incinerator I think Masa, oh, yeah? like Masamita is like in front of a crowd and they're like throwing lightsabers into an incinerator. Like, hey, these guys, they suck, right? You know, that sort of thing. Hmm. Um, so maybe kind of they did collect them weird. and then like put them there for, you know, propaganda reasons. But more children of clones would be interesting because I really liked... Uh, yeah, there's got to be a bunch out there. These guys, like, get decommissioned, and they're like, what am I going to do with my life? You know, life? how about, well, uh, uh, some of my, I'm trying to think of my favorite Legends characters from the books, because I've surpassed the amount of Legends content I've read with canon stuff now, because I was never a Legends completionist, but I'm a canon completionist, so it's, like, hard for me to remember some of this stuff. Um, how about Kudar Mubat? I don't remember who that is. Kudar Mubat is from the Bounty Hunter Wars trilogy and is an information broker who deals with criminals and is basically an organism that floats through space. Like, okay. think of an asteroid, but it's a being that's sort of like, you know, fibrous and whatever. And you walk inside it and you talk to it from the inside. Um, that's fun. Yeah. And it has a bunch of like sub organisms, you know, like, a, you know, like a, a white blood Organs, cell or whatever. Basically. Yeah, that yeah. Like, that walk around. And part of the thing was like it had like <laughs> an accountant organ that 
over time they generate their own intelligence and it calls them before they get too smart enough to like overthrow. Um, so yeah, Kudar Mubat. Uh, or I also liked the Republic Commando books um, and the so maybe some of those uh, other commandos because the ones from the video game are canon so just I don't know give us more mm. stuff with them because the only canon content with them is about 30 seconds in the Clone Wars when they come off a shuttle and deliver a dead Jedi to the temple and Scorch, I think it's officially him. Scorch is in the Bad Batch at the end of season one where they're um, on that like mountain base. He was in the video game too? Scorch is one of the four main characters in the video game. Oh, okay. I don't think I ever realized that at the time. I think I had always assumed he was just a new commando character they just invented for Bad Batch, but... That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, though. I'll, I'll have to think about... I don't think I'll get to the Clone Commandos soon, but... Yeah, well, I don't know. That's... Maybe, though. Because I kind of want to paint, like, Luminar and, and Barris, so maybe I would just do the Clone Commandos right after them. But it'd be cool to work in, like, some of the... Like, I know there's a green one, and there's a... I forget all the colored... Stri I think the one you said is maybe like a yellow stripe or something. There's, It'd be cool to it's like do or, some of those. Orange, like a kind of a red orange, a yellow, a green, and a like a maroon for those four. Mm. Like the part of me is like, but what if they re release them for reals these one day? And I'm like, well, then I won't want to paint them like this. Mm -hmm. Then you have to paint over your old one. Inquisitor Jarek from Dark Forces 2, JK. I don't know who that is. I don't think I've played Dark Forces 2. That's Jedi Knight. So he's the main bad guy. He has like a teeny tiny little ribbon across his eyes because he's supposed to be blind. Oh, he's, he's kind of a bald is old he, man. Is he blind or is he that species that's human but blind? <laughs> <laughs> Let me double check. I'm pretty sure he's just blind. But... There's a species that's their whole deal is human but blind. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, is it Mira Luca who can see with the force? That might be the same thing. Let me see what he is. Ugh, my screaming skull, good color, is just a clump of goop. Dang. Can I... So, yeah, that looks bad. Uh, I also have, my alternative would just be Vallejo's Ivory, which is... A little too bright to start with. Let's see if I can water this down and then scoop it onto my thing. Oh my god, holy crap. You are correct. <laughs> Jarek was a powerful Mira Luca Jedi Master. I don't think I ever realized that at the time. I always just thought he was just a human, but he had magical force vision the whole time. Whoa, no way. Jarek was apprenticed to Jocasta New? Huh. That's why he's an archaeologist. I guess Whoa. it makes sense. It's kind of silly, but... Hmm. Interesting. Jocasta... Is Manaru canon? Get <laughs> Dengar his girlfriend back. Probably not. That that would be cool. It. I like how she, like... It's it's an extremely kind of like tired sexist stereotype about the woman's emotions help heal the emotionless man or whatever. But you know, he's like I literally like emotionless at some points in yeah. Legends where he's like, they literally scientifically removed my feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Manaru has a canon page. I actually was not expecting that. Um... Sorry if that's loud. I'm trying to shake this thing. I don't hear it. Okay. Uh, according to the canon page, she was still Dengar's girlfriend. Uh, what source is this from? Is this some... I mean, a lot of that comic? can be just from, like, uh, offhanded reference in different, like, 
quote nonfiction books like the there's like a scum and villainy visual guides and yeah, stuff like that okay in the new star wars canon manru was first mentioned in the punishing one expansion pack for star wars x wing second edition okay that doesn't count uh being in uh, one of these games does not make something canon sorry everybody all her appearances are some bounty hunters comic oh okay 12 13 14 15 16 20 23 24 26 35 42 some of these are mentioned only but it yeah it looks like she's been in several yeah because weird because i like those comics despite how much i dislike violet valence they're from 2021. You know what? Let so... me let me rant about a Legends character who became canon. Okay. Bylert or Baylert Valance. I don't a... know who that is. <laughs> he, some people call him a Terminator ripoff, although technically he existed before the Terminator was a thing. Whoa. Um, but think <laughs> of damaged Terminator, you know, cyborg, you know, red eye, like s- robot skull. That's Skeleton. Right. Yeah. So he, because he was from the original Marvel comics and was recently, or, you know, a few years ago, they brought him back for the current run of Bounty Hunters, which I like despite me thinking this character is dumb and should have been left in the old comics. Um, he has blasters built into his hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically, just like, Terminator, super robo cyborg man, which is just very funny and stupid because also he's not that interesting compared to the other bounty hunters. He doesn't have much of a personality. You know, he's just like, oh, I'm grumpy and would rather be doing, I don't know, taking a nap or something. Um, but he was like a stormtrooper who got injured and then they rebuilt him. And it's, there's even in one of the more recent ones, because he, you know, becomes a bounty hunter. Like, Vader is, like, coercing him to work for him again. And it's like, how dumb is it that Vader's in the same room with this guy? Vader, the most, second most important guy in the Empire, lives in an iron lung. This guy, just some stormtrooper, is, like, the most advanced cyborg ever. Like, he's got, he looks like a human until he gets damaged, and then he's got, like, you know terminator parts and he's got weapons built into him and all this stuff it's like why did stormtrooper get this treatment and you know (laughs) vader gets iron (laughs) lung well the dark side uh of the force uh i don't know (laughs) this is screaming skull i'm trying to awaken here i I think i ran out of shop depot I have your shop tea bones like one of my favorite colors. Yeah, I've been because for a while I was like when it ran out, I would rebuy something in Army Painter, and then I've been getting a little sick of Army Painter because I like oh, yeah. Army Painter. I've never had an Army Painter like age out on me the way the Citadel paints do, like this one where it's just mm-hmm. gunk. But some of the Army Painter ones are like too runny and different, like the. I like the like the Citadel paint better, but I like the dropper bottles, and I like how the Army Painter doesn't just turn into mush on me. I don't know what to do right now. I don't know. Proacryl changed my Pro-acryl. life. Proacryl. No, Proacryl. It's a prescription. <laughs> Ask your doctor if Proacryl is right for you. Oh, with Proacryl, with Proacryl, <laughs> Procryl, uh, For people I can with finally paint minis again. Moderate to severe thinning of your paints. <laughs> I have started grabbing some Vallejo, but I think I have one or two scale color, which I've liked. Um, so I gotta just, yeah, as these paints go away, I just... Buy, try and buy that same ish color in a different brand see what i like because for the longest time i only had citadel paints because that's what sarastro was using in the imperial assault tutorials when i was learning how to paint 
He's really switched away from him, though. Yeah. I don't think I have any Vallejo, actually, which is... I think they sell a little at our local store, but I guess I've never... Vallejo? Yeah. Vallejo. <laughs> Vallejo? <laughs> Um, I don't know at all. Yeah, I don't really know the difference, I guess, since I haven't actually tried it, you know? I don't know. Uh, and I've never tried scale or anything else either. Scale feels like it's really pigmented, which is good. I always I see a display for Turbo Dork, too. I don't know what, if that's only airbrush paints, because I'm like, oh, those look like nice colors. But then I'm like, wait, is this just airbrush paint? Or is there a difference? I don't know anything about airbrushing because I don't have one. So I never bothered to learn more because it doesn't affect my life. Vallejo game color is decent. Their express colors are cool, very much like ah. contrast. Yeah, that's a good point. I forgot that they have their own you know, speed paint line now. I'd be kind of curious to try that and see if I like it better than the AP speed paints that I don't, I don't want to diss them and stuff, but I did not like the AP colors that I tried a, a lot. Of, some, some of them are, are okay, but a lot of them kind of didn't quite like work for me. The color color or like how they applied? Um, is that like I used a lot of them on my zombies for zombie side, and they're good. Like I like them for that because it's really bright colors. Yeah, I mean it. It depends on the colors. There were two or three that I thought did turn out really good. A lot of them were like too. At least for me, they felt like they were kind of too, like monochromatic in a way. You know what I mean? Like they were they didn't have much depth to them but i the biggest issue for me is just um the reactivation really oh. drives me crazy that makes it, it hard a, for me to use them like broadly you know I sorry kind of just i also don't i don't use contrast or speed paints very much it's always like when i watch a sarastro video and he's like we're gonna use it just for this one little thing i'm like oh that's feels weird to me but i've been using um a lot. Um, I might use them for the Ewoks. It's kind of like... Oh, yeah? I mean... All these Ewoks to paint, but... Uh, It'd be nice to get them done faster, basically. Yeah, because I'm planning on getting three more squads of Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want at least five squads of Ewoks. Wow. But... I'm waiting because... I'm going to buy that many. I want to get them where I can get the best discount. And they're out of stock at that place. Yeah, I feel like for me, I've like mostly switched to contrast just because like I need to save time. But I, I do like touch them up a lot. I, I, I can't really stand any of the contrast or speed paints just applied straight and then like left. It looks it looks like obviously contrast to me and I, yeah, I don't, I, ha I have to like add some highlights and add some weathering and stuff. Um, to, to make it really look good to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used it for all of my like zombies and stuff. And then it was good for that, but I get what you're saying about the speed and, it makes it hard to go back to normal style. Like it's so slow, the old fashioned way. Like you do so many coats. Well, if you're still, and... if you're Gosh. still, uh, like doing highlights and stuff, is it that much faster? So you're, yeah. Cause it's still like one coat. You don't have to put on, you know, uh, like a wash, like null oil or something. I mean, you still can if it gets the right color, but like, you don't need to, and it's it's always one coat, and 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 just that one coat goes on so quick since it's so watery, you know. It's just like so much faster to do that one coat than to sit and do your base color. For me, mm. at least. 
but it it depends to you know it depends on the mini i've definitely found with minis that have a lot of different colors like a lot of different areas on them like especially like rebel troopers or scum troopers the like the swoop bikes i did once you get a lot of colors it's like definitely less of a help it's you know you i think you lose out on some of the benefit they're definitely perfect for like b1 battle droids when you can just do one entire mini in one color and then come in and add some touch-ups uh then it's like perfect i think it still is faster even on like rebel troopers but you get less of a benefit for sure i always feel like if you just go all in on contrast like you said it's like oh it's just a contrast paint yeah but... it's like it it is too obvious i think And again, depending on the color, like I have some colors that I think look really obviously like a contrast, like they're kind of oily, like they don't go on smooth enough. Or he just um, has to eat. If you have to like get hooked up to some like feeding <laughs> tube and like waste tube when he goes home. I feel like, don't we see him like drink a shake or something in Clone Wars or something like when he's at his no, like his so. lair he's not like sipping out of a straw or something <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I don't think so. <laughs> here's another conversation they probably card. they probably plug some tube into him yeah go ahead um oh okay here you go some Jedi can sense the history of an object when they touch it Oh, yeah. If you had this ability, what item would you want to pick up and learn about? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I love that power. Uh, well, I like Star that... Wars and out of Star Wars, you know, but I, I like that uh, it's a force power. I don't. Is it if look up Quinlan Voss, look up his species because he's not human. He's just another might as well be human because in Legends his that power to sense an object psychometry was part of his species and not a force power like boba fett's oh. wife in legends was a kifar as well i think okay that's weird uh yeah so i want to know if that's still part of that species and if it's not why is quinlan Voss not just a human but he's oh there's a jedi in the higher public too that's a kifar and it seems like the only difference between them and humans is they have little colored lines on their face that look like, you know, some kind of face paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Cannon says he is a Kifar. I'm trying to see if there's any info on his powers. Check the species, if it mentions that power as being part of the species. Because he see. has that power, he uses it in Clone Wars. Yeah, he does have it. There's a lot of references to the power, but they're mostly not explaining it. But here, powers and abilities. It's around for his psychometry. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, at least in his page, it doesn't really explain. It doesn't describe it as force or species or anything. It just just says it's a thing he has so let me see the species here near human species from the plants kifu and kifex okay kifar were distinguished distinguished by their scarlet blood and facial tattoos scarlet blood <laughs> wow that's so different from humans <laughs> And, and their facial tattoos, which humans never get face tattoos. That's only aliens that can do that. <laughs> uh, which indicated their clan affiliation on their species' homeworlds. Um, Why would Jedi have that? Did they give those tattoos to <laughs> toddlers? That must be. Yeah, it's like a, a birth thing. It's got to be. Right before he was picked up. Uh, a small number of the species, including Voss, possessed the gift of psychometry. So that implies it's a species thing, but I, you know, that's the only detail. There's no more extra info on it. So, mm. you know, maybe it's 
maybe it's like only force sensitive ones for some reason. Like maybe it's kind of associated with their species without being. Yeah. Uh, probably not. It's probably just some dumb. There's probably no good. Ex- well, I wow, would... Quinlan boss was buff in, uh, in legends in the Republic comics. I think that's where he bangs. Yeah, he's Jack. Sakura. <laughs> yeah, probably. God. Um, what would I touch? I would just get a job as a detective, like a private eye. Be like, oh, yep. I don't know. The, I mean, that's the murder weapon. <laughs> it would be like useful, but you would see some bad stuff too you know um what if you touched probably doesn't work on living things Mm, everyone is just like i don't know get a can i somehow touch like a miniature that the devs were using in (laughs) playtesting I feel like I would touch like, like an, I don't know, like an arcade cabinet or a pinball machine or something, and then like, oh, I see how to get the high score. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole. Just copy them. Another practical use might be like scamming people, being like some kind of mystic, you know, and taking yeah, advantage like see, of vulnerable people. Like, <laughs> yeah, or or like see a like the safe combination or something, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I that can't think good. of many ethi- password on their computer. <laughs> I can't think of many ethical but not traumatizing ways to use the power. Yeah. It's like using it to like solve crimes probably pretty ethical, but it's going to not be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a weird question. Like there's not It's like, many... "Oh, did you want to like <laughs> You know, touch the controller to see if your little brother was playing with your shit. Jason Prince says, don't use public toilets with that power. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta believe, it's gotta be semi-voluntary. I, right? like I, you've gotta be able to control it It somehow. was a plot point in, I think you can control it for sure, but sometimes you can't. You, oh no. Because remember in Fallen Order... Trilla specifically lets him touch her lightsaber in the middle of the fight to distract him by like making him see her traumatic past. Oh gosh. Yeah, so if right. the object you're touching is traumatized enough, you might not have control over it, such as a public toilet. <laughs> There's a lot of trauma there for sure. <laughs> oh my god. You see someone uh, you someone of that power walks in and sits down and then you just hear them screaming, Oh god. <laughs> It feels like, other than, like, solving crimes or committing crimes, there's not a lot of, like, good uses for it. It's you know, really it's like good a lot for, of like, stuff. like, video game, like, world building. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so useful and interesting in the Jedi Fallen Order, because it's like, like, they have the scanning, too, but I, they, I like that they kind of, you kind of get different memories from each or different types of info from from that and the object reading, it's it's nice to get that little bit of extra lore. That makes it feel more way star way more star Star Warsy to me. I think. I mean, I guess if you were like going clothes shopping, you would know which clothes had been tried on and by how gross was the person who already <laughs> wore this clothes. Well, and you'd see, um, you'd also see like the sweatshop where it was manufactured oh, and yeah, you would you like could... never be able to wear clothing again. Yeah. You <laughs> could feel see too bad. Just how unethical every single product you have to consume in order to exist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope it doesn't go through gloves at least. So you could be like rogue. You could just wear gloves all the time and then take it off when you need to use your power. Ah. But it might also just go through gloves. I don't know. How about um, you can choose one? You can choose to adopt one Star Wars creature to be your pet. Which do you pick, and what would you name it? Oh man! I mean, my first thought is a loath cat because cats are great. I don't know what I would name it. Hmm. Loath. 
Because there's a lot of, uh, you know, I'm we're assuming that they can be that it's just by default it is domesticated. Like, right. So you yeah, could yeah. pick a wampa and it'll be fine. But you know, size is a problem. That's the reason I don't have a dog is because our apartment's too small. Yeah, I mean, wampas are really hard to house train. Like, I mean, and provide even for. I, yeah. You gotta That's bring it. Lot. You know, like if you have a pet snake, you feed it mice. That's easy. You have a pet womp, but you gotta feed it like horses. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always its instinct is to like try and stick them to the ceiling with its spit. <laughs> so. Yeah, you come home you, and you, just like your couch is stuck to the ceiling, just because that's like <laughs> instinct kicking in. Um, something you I could like, like ride would great... be nice, like a tauntaun or like a a varactyl. I mean, yeah, I think a tauntaun would be. I mean, supposedly they smell, and they mm. I feel like they probably spit and stuff too. They're probably pretty like gross. A llama? I I bet they do. I don't remember if that's in like the fact pop about them or anything, but I bet I bet they spit. Um I'd like a Nexu, but that would mm. also be a good like guard dog kind of thing. Uh what about like a a Dianoga? That would be kind of fun. You could like eat your garbage, be kind of like more uh environmentally safe like <laughs> garbage disposal. And apparently they can like use telepathy or something, according again to Fakpov. <laughs> they like fall in love with you or something. <laughs> yeah. Um Well if you uh, want a garbage disposal, get a Sarlacc. Yeah, that's true. That that would be cool. Just have a Sarlacc in your yard, you know? It's not gonna do anything to you if you don't like go fall in. So well, especially if it's we're considering it's domesticated, it maybe can like know it's you and be like, alright, it's cool. It's a, yeah, it's like a vegetarian sarlacc. You just throw your uh, your leftover like rotting veggies in there. That would be cool. Where's some other? I mean, I like I like the space whales, but I can't imagine uh, what owning one would be like. But maybe you could like ride it around, like put on a spacesuit and like go <laughs> fly through space with it. I don't know. What about a uh, uh, what's it called? Charhound from High Republic. It's basically like a dog that breathes fire. Okay. Hmm. There's. It's hard to come up with. There's like so many different cool beasts and animals that it's hard for me to think of a specific one off the top of my head the gorax <laughs> some wisties uh are wisties creatures or are they like sentient uh beings it's never quite know. clear to me because they just look like little tinkerbells because it would be weird. What if there was a near human species whose only differentiating trait was that they have the intelligence of like a Tauntaun or whatever? <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah, that'd be weird. A boar gullet <laughs> in the oh. chat. That'd be really good if you were doing up the previously mentioned uh, like detective. Good for interrogations. Yeah. I, you can read the objects and the boar gullet can read the mines. Yeah. I like the uh little axolotl otter guy from Star Wars Outlaws. Nope. Again, I've said this before. I I wouldn't want to pet it. <laughs> but it'd be fun <laughs> to have as a little pal. The scales look gross. I, I wouldn't want to touch it. But uh, I like that you can, like, send it to go, you know, steal from people. or. What about a, a Kowakian lizard monkey? I bet they're real annoying. I bet, I bet they, like... <laughs> they're, like, semi-intelligent. So, like... And, like, even if you house train them, I'm guessing they... 
it's like a cat that is mad at you. They're like, I'm going to pee everywhere to show this guy, right? It's going to suck. Um, you could just eat him, though, if you get tired of it. Here Buckethead says, what were the dog-like aliens that Talon Card had? Born skiers? Born skiers are dumb. I don't know I anything agree. about them other than they're like force negating, which is always stupid. No, no, no. Born skiers are force sensitive and they use it to hunt. Oh, that's less stupid. No, the, the salam, the uh, salami, the salami. Salamiri. Yeah, the, yes. Those, those are, are pretty those dumb. are dumb. I think born skiers are kind of dumb too. They're kind of like, you know, like nineties. Oh, it's a wolf. And it has like a scorpion tail and it has the force. Uh, and it, Probably breathes fire and. What about a, uh, a porg? Oh, porg would be cool. A porg would be cool. I don't know why I didn't think of porgs, or porgs or um, vulpex. Oh vulpex yeah, vulpex would be cool. I was about to say it might be annoying because they jingle, but my cats jingle, so it's probably fine. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun. Where's I think it's here? a vulpex. Vol the Vulptex or a Vulp I think it's a Vulptex. Probably. Uh, a Sando Aqua Monster. What's that one? <laughs> that is the um, so-called bigger fish in Phantom Menace. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ginormous, like, ten-story tall creature. Uh, what about um, Corillian hounds from Solo? Those gross, like... <laughs> yeah, they're a little too gross, I think. I need something furry and fuzzy. But maybe they're really nice. They're probably like um, like bulldogs, you know, where like people who own them are like, oh, they're the sweetest, they're the nicest thing. Like, yeah, pit All bulls. stereotypes. You get used to all the snot and gross stuff <laughs> after. Um, what Bethany say? Oh, she's obsessed with pit bulls because they're. Oh yeah. <laughs> in the, um, like at the eighteen hundreds, it was actually called a nanny dog. Like people used them oh. for like because how good they were with kids and stuff. It's literally just people said, "Oh, they look tough, so let's you know." train them to yeah. be terrible yeah it's definitely a society thing yeah. where not like a, people they're... think that they're mean dogs so they treat them that way they make them into mean dogs yeah it's not like an inherent... i think any dog pretty much any dog could be mean if you were a big yeah. dick to it um Rock lady tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a separate question because she's not a, a beast, but I would want to be friends with the frog lady. She, she seems, I bet her and her husband play board games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the vibe that I'm getting from them. They're kind of nice. She's so cool in that episode. Like, seriously, she's like in this really dangerous position with this honestly kind of a jerk who's like not going to keep his promise to her and she's like okay i'm gonna hack this droid i'm gonna wake this guy the f up i'm gonna make him keep his promise she like is really crafty and uh kind of like she really stands up for herself even though you can tell she's not comfortable yeah i think she's a great character i wanted to come back my only issue with that character is they call her frog lady and not gecko lady because she's clearly a gecko and not a frog <laughs> <laughs> my issue is that i don't think she has a name like no. i want her to be like a real character i want her to like come back i want her to have a fact pov uh well if, uh, mandalorian's 40th anniversary maybe we'll get one of those <laughs> i wonder if they'll stick with that or if we did a phantom menace certain point of view book it won't we won't have to wait till uh, 2039. You're probably right that they're planning those, you know. 
what what are gonna what are gonna be some of the big stories for uh phantom menace for for its book the boba yeah Wano. Mm-hmm. probably like every racer gets their own story <laughs> about them being in that race and you get to see it from every perspective yeah Wado's a good call too i think there'd be definitely a Wado story and you know I feel like we could learn a little more about Wada's backstory, right? Like, he's got you know, like the most tragic, like, home life you've ever heard of, and he takes it out on his racing opponents. He definitely has like a a bit of divorced dad energy. <laughs> I feel like uh, maybe he's like he could be related to the king from uh from Clone Wars. For all we know, he could be like. Maybe he was like fifth in line for the throne, and then a coup happened or something. He was first, and then he said, "You know what? I'd rather race." I guess he's from before the clone. What am I thinking? Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe he was gonna be king, and that king like cooed him. Makes you think. Now he's king of the track. <laughs> um, you'd have to do Rick Olay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you could do Anakin's little friends. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> when they say, let's play ball, we get that story where they play ball. Yeah. Or um, you could have... Uh, why can't I think of his name? The Captain Gungan. Tarples? Yep, yep. Yeah, he's cool. He could have a cool story. Captain Tarples is awesome. I love his death in Clone Wars. Because it's like really oh badass, and then it's completely negated by Padme. Um, basically, they're on Naboo, and I think it's the one where the Gungan boss, who's not Boss Nass anymore, is um, he's being like voodooed by some kind of Gungan witch guy. Like, yeah, he has like an evil necklace on or something. Yeah, and then they figure that out, and then they um, knock out the boss or whatever, and then but the Gungans are going to go to war with the humans, and they're like, well, this can't stand because this guy was obviously being manipulated by Dooku, and then that's when they have Jar Jar take his place because they look identical, and uh, I actually thought it was genuinely quite funny when Jar Jar has to meet Grievous pretending to be this boss guy. Um, and then the Gungans fight Grievous and they take him down. And like, that's how Captain Tarples dies. He's like, uh, Grievous is like, how does it feel to die? And he's like, not death, sacrifice. And he like pulls the spear through his stomach to stab Grievous harder or something like that. And they take him down. And it's like, wow, that was cool, but all these cool warrior Gungans just took down General Grievous. And then Dooku captures Anakin, and he's like, yo, Padme, I'll trade you Dooku for... I'll trade you Grievous for Anakin. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and then <Sold>. like, <laughs> yeah. we end the episode, like, having gained nothing. <laughs> yeah, great writing. Um, Buckethead says more about Shmi. Yeah, give us more Shmi story. Give us a... I don't need pre-movie Shmi. I need Shmi right after Anakin leaves, where yeah. now she's alone. She's, like, bittersweet. She's like, my son isn't a slave anymore, but now I have no one uh, except 3PO. <laughs> and now I gotta she's slave like, harder because, you know, I gotta work for two slaves. She's, you know like, what? pulling up uh, Space Tinder. Maybe... She's, they got a pretty nice apartment for slaves. You know, they're still slaves. Not not cool, but as far as slaves go, they had a nice house. I guess. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a two-bedroom. I mean, it could be worse, but I don't know how to call it nice. <laughs> Anakin had lots of toys. He had a backyard to build a pod racer. 
They must have lived by a junkyard or something. Where do you get pod racer parts and droid parts? I mean, just basically stuff that uh, Watto doesn't care if he takes. Also, I guess if you look at Tatooine and like Battlefront and stuff, like every street seems to be people's junkyard. <laughs> like, let's just yeah. throw trash everywhere. But not just like trash, like large machinery trash. Yeah. Okay, I think the main base colors are done on Grievous. I need to do the lightsabers and the underside of his cape. That looks like a really good start. And then uh, I think that'll be the base colors and we'll be ready for whoever to put it on the washes. When did Lars free her? She, she, I don't think she got, she, she probably got freed shortly after the events of the movie. If what I remember about Attack of the Clones is. How did Klieg Lars meet Shmi? Did he? So I'm saying she's like on Tinder, like looking, I gotta find someone. <laughs> well, did he go to like Watto's shop and was like, hey, I need, you know, evaporator parts. And then he's like, oh, hello. How much for that lady? <laughs> what have we here? <laughs> you truly belong with us among the dunes. I still like to think that the uh, Tuscan Raiders um, were trying to help Shmi. They found her. Yeah, in the they desert. knew like a, a folk uh, remedy or something, you know? Right. That the injury she had was she fell down a cliff or something and they tied her up. Because that's like their medicine. You don't want her to hurt herself. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they tied her to wood, which is, you know, not unheard of on Tatooine, but it's not common. It's got to be pretty special to get a piece of wood. Yeah, it's a sign of. Uh, like they like used the wood for their gas. Remember when Boba Fett found a tree after he was, you know, high with a lizard up his nose? That was a big deal. Probably the same wood they used to tie up Shmi to get her better. Yeah, the the wood maybe had healing properties, like from touching the wood. There's like some, uh, you know, natural essential oil. <laughs> <laughs> and Anakin just blunders in. He's uh ignorant of their their culture. And he yeah. commits genocide. And then Padme's like, oh, they're there. Everybody is Poops among us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, ah. He's just kind of lost his control. Kind of a, for... It's a red flag, but also, like, he's... I don't have a lot of options right now. <laughs> I will say, um, every time I rewatch that movie, for as memed as it is, it's not like the sand line. When he like freaks out in the garage uh which is cool because i think you can see the skyhopper in the background in that scene when he starts freaking out to padme about what he did i think it's genuinely good delivery and acting if you watch it yeah, he's kind of like having a a, a panic attack kind yeah. of because he's like trying to process it right he's not like just mad yeah he's definitely like having yeah it's like a panic attack it's I really like that scene, and because it's like, oh, this is good acting. This is good character stuff for Anakin. And then you laugh at how Padme's just like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> like maybe she's like, this is fucked up. I don't know what else to say. Like, I'll, I, I think maybe telling him that he's evil is a bad move here. You know? Like, yeah, which is fair. And then maybe it's she, hard. Obviously, she would get see. over it later. She'd be like, oh, yeah, that was fine. They they probably talk about it more, and we just don't see, because they're trying to keep the movie moving, right. you know, but... Also, yeah, I do feel like, like as good of a person as Padme is, she's probably not immune to the general sentiment on that planet that those sand people are, you know, savages. Yeah. Which, you know, some of them are, I think. There's definitely, uh, like... It's definitely a lot of like kind of Wild West stuff where it's like, well, 
Yeah, you got that. They lived there first, but they are, you know, murdering a lot of people now and then. Like, there's different tribes too. Like the, I think the ones Boba Fett I, hanged out with was different than the ones Anakin killed. Yeah, it was like, so nice to see like a different representation of them in in Mando and in Boba Fett. Right, and I think they have a language and they have customs and cultures and they will be nice to people who are nice to them and stuff like that. Right. I think the ones from attack of the clones, Mando and Boba Fett are like three different groups. Cause they're, I think that you, that's something that even existed in legends where it's like, okay, yeah, well those ones are the ones that like, you don't want to like interact with. These ones are cool. If you like know how to, you know, treat them and not be a dick. And, but yeah, it's, I, it is cool to see those different angles because it is a lot. It's obviously just very Western, you know. Ooh, what about a massive for a pet? The Sand People's puppies. I feel like they seem kind of gross to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a lot of a lot of the creatures that aren't explicitly designed to be cute are like, what if we mixed regular animal with lizard? Yeah, and it's lumpy and it's slimy. Yeah, I mean, I've got to have the fur, which is why I'm like coming back to okay. both cats and porgs. What about, I want uh... it to be like soft and fuzzy. I'm trying to think of other like fuzzy creatures and I'm drawing a blank. Um painting red is red is one of my favorite colors to paint, but it's also always interesting because it's so much brighter until the paint dries. It's harder to like judge your highlights. Mm -hmm. Especially Mephiston red. Probably my favorite paint. I guess I'm not going to need to do too much highlighting on the cape since it's on the bottom. I'll just have to highlight this bit here. Uh, yeah. yeah, it kind of depends. One of the things I've been trying to get better about with highlighting is like not just uniformly highlighting over the entire thing, like actually worry about, you know, the angle of the light a little bit. That's something I think Leo does a really, really good job with on his highlights. You can tell that like, oh, it really is brighter at the top. And like, logically that makes sense, but I kind of always forget to actually do that when I'm painting. It's just like, oh, highlight every raised edge. You know what I mean? And, yeah. it, and that's fine, but uh, like Leo's highlights end up looking so much, they just pop so much more. I tend to yeah, just do like what's facing upwards. Unless I usually... You know, sometimes I'll try and go a little bit brighter near, like, a lightsaber, but I don't end up doing, like, full-on OSL anyways. So I'm like, well, I don't need to... These are... uh, What's it called? These are original trilogy rules lightsabers where they don't actually give off light. And they cast shadows. See? Put your mini on the table, the lightsaber casts a shadow. That means it's original trilogy rules. Next time you watch those movies, watch for shadows that the lightsabers <laughs> cast. And, mm -hmm. you know, that makes sense. Checkmate, atheists. <laughs> okay, let me do... Let's paint the blades last, but I better paint the hilt. Wow, you've been making really fast progress on that. Not even using speed. It's looking good. Do you think you'll do much or any weathering, like little scratches or damage on his armor or anything should, like that? I should probably. We'll see. I didn't do any of that on my clone troopers, but uh, we'll see. 
I mean, his cape is a little tattered, so maybe he should be a little beat up. I don't know if I'll, like, put, like, you know, blaster marks or anything like that, but... Mm-hmm. Maybe just a little... little scratches here and there. I don't know what, uh... color to do that just maybe like a dark brown yeah I mean you could do probably dark brown scratches is what I've done the most on my clones um sounds right they give me an idea. I wonder if it would look cool or look silly to have Grievous be like all metal, like just bare metal plates. The so looking at mine, are you saying the dark and the light colors are metal, or like different shades of? Like, would you still mm. pick the same like uh, where the colors are broken up? Yeah, that's a good question. Metal if it was all be. the same color, it would be bad, I think. But I'm not yeah. sure what two different colors you would do either. I mean, maybe like mm -hmm. a bronze and a you know, more metal metal. Maybe, maybe might look pretty silly. It might look really cool to just for like the light parts, just do like stormtrooper armor. Mm-hmm. Or I wonder, hmm, okay. I've done some of my battle droids in Bedlam Raider style. So they've got like, I mean, each one's different, you know, but basically like they have some red on their chest or on their arms. Yeah, maybe like red arms on Grievous would look kind of cool. Or would it look weird when he's holding colored lightsabers too? It'd be like two rainbow or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to paint him soon, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, maybe not uh, full color, but like if he had like some of the edges or there were like, you know, little racing stripes. Yeah, like a nice thin red racing stripe would be pretty good. And then he'd go faster. I'm excited to get this guy back on the table. I played one game with him and I thought he was pretty fun. Yeah. Did you get to trigger his bonus damage thing no the only times i could have done it i was only engaged with one other person and it seems like it's not worth two force to put two damage on one other character yeah agreed two force for two damage on two other characters is still feels a bit steep yeah if there were three that would be worth it but i don't know how often that'll happen that you'd be engaged with four different units not even characters but units right yeah it's... i think the 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 one case it would be amazing would be if the two damage finished someone off um and then you trigger his other thing off of that like that would be huge yeah, that would be but cool. it's got to be really rare yeah it seems like may maybe one force is just too cheap for that ability but two force made me just never want to use it yeah yeah, it feels like it should be in between one and a half somehow. I mean, especially like one if he if he takes any wounds, then it'll it'll be super expensive too. Yeah, that was another time where I had a chance to use it, but like, oh well, I'm gonna I'm not gonna pay three for this. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. If you could finish someone, uh, what's the wording? If you could. Again, this is going to be so rare, but if you could finish off a Jedi with it, then you would get the Force back right away, and that would be great. But the rest of the time... I mean, his other abilities are still good. The Scuttle and the Appetite for Destruction. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I just played him with Grievous, Kraken, B2s, Ventress, Kalani, B1s. Mm -hmm. And just... That sounds Kra good. Kraken and Kalani on the same team are just super good telling the droids to go everywhere and then Grievous is moving the droids and telling them to attack 
I think I might want to swap out Ventress for Dooku and see how that goes, because he can also move Separatist Alliance characters. Um, I like Ventress's mobility, but she's not this. She, you know, she's not um. Like, she doesn't combo the same way. Right. She's also not like commanding anybody the way all the other units are. The problem with Dooku is he's only seven points. So then I think you, if you just up. switch, um, I think if you give Kraken to Dooku, you can give Kalani to Grievous. I think you can fit it. Uh, you just switch some of the guys. Oh, and s- yeah, you'd have to swap the B2s for Magna Guard. And then, and then I think it would. You can't have out. B2s and B1s. I thought you could if you just. Shuffle uh, some guys around. Not if you have both Kalani and Kraken, because uh, one of those is B twos are four points and Kalani is five, so there's like no way to make it work out perfectly for all of them since Duke is seven. I think I I may be doing the math wrong in my head too, but yeah I. I've barely tried anything yet. I've only played a couple matches, but Dooku is like next on my on my mental list of things I want to try. I also need to get him painted soon. But, I've really uh, been enjoying anybody with the Separatist Alliance tag. I've been really liking. Yeah, they have like a lot of good, just a lot of good combos. I mean, Django's really fun too. He doesn't quite fit in that like all droid list as much um but he just has good enough abilities on his own yeah but kraken and kalani together are so good it's like well maybe once cad bane comes out i want to make a team with cad bane and Django and aura yeah and, you know whoever else maybe maybe maul will have to be the other primary hmm. i think I maul has like the scoundrel tag maybe Maybe one of the people in the Cad Bane box will do something with that. Yeah, I guess we don't know their stats at all yet, do we? No. Nope. For the Cad Bane. Give us stats. I mean, those are. What's the release date on those? Let me see. The first or something. Let's see. How would I find that pack? Since it's not called Cad Bane pack, what is oh, it called? How will for... I find it? Credits. Fistful uh, of credits. Okay, it actually does have Cad Bane in the name. That's weird. Oh. It seems to be about 50-50 if they put the person's name on it or not. But yeah, Cad Bane. Did they yeah. change, is, it still, is it just Fistful of Credits, not Fistful of Credits Squad Pack? Because it was the only one without the uh, words Squad Pack in the title. The box image just says Fistful of Credits, but the... Title on the page is Star Wars Shatterpoint Fistful of Credits Cad Bane Squad Pack. So, something doesn't match there. Mm-hmm. We should get a preview really soon. That's less than a month away. Yeah, hopefully this week. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, now that Gen Con's done, maybe they will publish some stuff. Uh, isn't... Yeah, Amadala also September 1st. We need both of those. Yeah, I'm excited for both of those packs, I think. Even not knowing the stats, the minis are good enough. I really like the RS Singh mini. I think that's the best one in that pack. I, re- I like, they all look really good. I, the Devaronian looks like he'll be really fun to paint. Gotta see if I can fit Toto onto Cad Bane's base somewhere. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a little bit of effort here and thin out this Agrax Earth Shade in order to. I don't need to go full on Agrax Earth Shade on this Grievous. Yeah, you'd probably just have to like highlight it back up a lot and lose a lot of it anyway.
I'm surprised they don't have more stuff on the store page for Shatterpoint. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that's announced that is not, you know, we haven't heard from since whenever that was that we heard about them. Adepticon? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Nice. May. Oh, Mace is actually supposed to come out this month. 18th of this month. Wow. I thought he was further away than that. But well, Mace and yeah, the Night get... Sisters of this month. Yeah. So then we'll have Cad Bane and Padme next month. And then I assume Plo Koon is going to be one of the next ones because he seems yeah, the furthest be. along in the pictures, right? Yeah. But he was not in the display. Oh, yeah, actually, so we should, I assume we'll get that um, original trilogy mini wave before Plo Koon and stuff then, because those are actually in the display case. Yeah, good point. So maybe those are like October or something. Jason Prince says, I suspect the prequel will pause and they will go to OT pre-Christmas. Yeah, I'm curious to see what they end up doing. When we talked to... Uh, it was Will Schick, right, that we talked to? Yes. That we interviewed? Yes. He... I kind of tried to ask him about their like release strategy and he... Didn't really say much. So my assumption is they don't really have any uh, specific plans to, like, balance, you know, the factions or eras or anything like that. It's just going to kind of be random, it seems like. They'll probably jump back and forth. Yeah, I feel like you'd. I would want there to be the ability to run a full strike team that's from the same era and of the same affiliation. Like, if our only strike teams for a while are Vader and Luke, like, I, I want, you know, somebody. Yeah. And I want another set of good guys and another set of bad guys. So I can at least have a full team that is more thematic. Yeah. Obviously, it's like allowed, but it would be nice to have uh, thematically appropriate options, too. Yeah. I mean, what other original trilogy stuff? I guess Spectres. Oh, yeah. Those can't come out. So I mean, early. I guess Inquisitors are multi era at least, so those would work for oh, yeah. Dark Side. Vader's fine. But yeah, Luke. I guess once once Spectres come out, you'll have stuff I you guess can pair with Luke. Han will come out eventually. I wonder who will be with Han? Since Lando's coming with Luke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what version of Han do you think? They well, they do. showed the mini. It looked like a new Hope Han. Oh yeah. So I forgot be, to be a picture. Of it. It'll be Chewbacca, and then uh, I don't know, maybe just some smuggler, random smuggler. I don't mind them tossing in just generic character for the support units. Yeah, I mean, as long as they're cool enough, uh, I don't know. Uh, you could do like, but we've already seen them kind of changing up the pattern a little bit, right? They're not always a generic support, which is kind of interesting. Like with the Luke pack for, I mean, we don't really know. Inquisitors. Stats. Yeah, Inquisitors as well. So maybe they'll find something creative to do with it. Maybe, I don't know. What if he came with Greedo? <laughs> <laughs> Greedo would be a really fun uh, secondary if he worked similar to Imperial Assault, you know? Yeah. Like they really did a good job with the abilities on that one. Imperial Assault was such a... Part of the game 
trick with him was trying to shoot where you couldn't get shot back, which is not really a thing you can do in Shatterpoint. But yeah, still, like fair. having the I shoot second kind of mechanic would be fun. Yeah, for like original trilogy stuff, I mean, I want some fleet troopers as a support at some point. I want wing guard as a support at some point. I think they could do like a young Han Solo as well, like a solo era Han. And then it could be like Han and Beckett. I don't know. Stuff like that. That would be really cool, I think. Maybe they'll get there someday. L3 and Lando. An L3 mini would be so cool. Yeah. Thinned washes. Pretty nice. I feel like for, I mean, I I love original trilogy characters, but it's like, I also have so many of them in other games. So I kind of find myself wanting more of the like slightly alternate versions, like the young Han or like I, Spectres will be cool, even though we've had them in Imperial Assault, but like, I really want like, like Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor characters, I think would be really cool. It would be so cool if we got some of the like melee scout troopers and uh, KX droids and stuff like that. That would be really mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, I just want Cal and Marin. Yeah. Ahsoka stuff. Wonder if Ahsoka stuff might surprise us. I'm. It might be like a while. I, mean, they, I don't they, expect they, them to the be. Clients, you know? I feel like they tried once to be current with releases, and that was with the Force Awakens core set for X Wing, and then again with the Destiny two player starter for Last Jedi, and like the because the, the, these Atomic Mass Games, Fantasy Flight, they're licensors. They're not. They get given so little information that they yeah. don't have enough to design the characters to represent them properly. Like when the first Poe Dameron came out in X-Wing, he wasn't like the maximum pilot skill. And then the movie came out and you're like, Oh, this is one of the best pilots in the star Wars universe. Why doesn't the X-Wing one have the max pilot skill? And they're like, well, you know, they didn't tell us anything about the character. We just knew he flew an X-Wing and <laughs> right. was the main character. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I, you can see the same thing even with the Kenobi pack for Shatterpoint that's a whole year after the show but you know I think you raised the point in your un unboxing video that like you know they could have made the diorama look more like the show right so like even then it feels like they were maybe like a little bit pressed for time in a way yeah. So like maybe we'll get some type of Ahsoka tie in stuff a year after and we'll kinda of go like, oh, it's kinda of, kinda of matches. Yeah. I don't know. Jason says that Lego has shown that you can have builds ready to go in the series of cures. And so has Hasbro, although these days Hasbro seems to wait like six months to give us toys of the thing that just came mm -hmm. out, which is weird. But also with Lego, they just need to see a picture and they can make it. With these, you need to ha have an understanding of how the characters act so you can inform your design, which is harder. Yeah, that's true. Especially, like, Atomic Mass needs to know uh, quotes from the show to use for the ability names. <laughs> I kind of lost without that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, no most offense. of the, yeah. the, the design. Every ability is just a, a quip. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, can you give us some s scripts of some of the episodes? Like, where are some good one-liners? <laughs> we can't figure out what to do with this character. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to... I'm going to, but I I like how this wash went on it so well that I'm like, oh, it's looking I... really good. I don't want to like, like highlight it too much. Hint. Yeah. But I'll, I'll bring it up a bunch on the face and then 
on like the the edges and stuff. We'll see. Hopefully, I don't undo too much. And I gotta paint his eyes. I should just. I got this red paint out. So I'll use that, and then I'll try and hit it with yellow. Eyes are like, uh, I'll use Bugman's glow for his eye flesh. Mm -hmm. Jason says, trying to paint Maul's face here. Tricky. Ooh. Yeah. I it, haven't done mine yet, but it, is... I, it looked to me like the the pattern is more molded on than yeah. it's, some it's... old. I, obviously, it's bigger, too. It's sculpted, which makes it easier than Legion or Imperial Assault. So I guess I've painted Maul three times now. It's, it's tough though even with the sculpt it's tough and you've got to like look at a reference to see well is the raised part black or is the raised part red nice. and then like yeah. follow the grooves along to see like what stays red and what stays black and it's yeah i saw someone post a painted mall or a work in progress or something recently and i found myself asking like are they painting it right they might have flipped it but i didn't look it up so i don't know they uh, might have been very right. one of our patrons he he did it that way by accident and then decided that he liked it and it was a fun like alternate paint scheme oh yeah that's a good idea yeah i mean it's turns out maul is more black than he is red so if you flip it it's definitely like a more kind mm. of vibrant yeah. look jason says chest red is raised face red is depressed oh, oh my no. god i hope that's not true that sounds I don't know. I don't like the sound of that. That sounds like an old, like, sailor's adage. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking a bit red in the face. Red on the face is depressed. <laughs> Remember, chest, red is raised. Face, red is depressed. <laughs> uh, that, like, almost rhymes to, like... If you want red raised, paint the face. If you want red depressed, paint the chest. Except that's actually the exact opposite of what he <laughs> said. So. Red depressed, paint the chest. Red is raised. Well, how about black, black depressed? Raised. Black depressed, paint the chest. Uh -huh. Black raised. Uh, face. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. We got it. Just tell yourself that now. Black up. You're in. In luck. luck. <laughs> Red on pex. Uh. Kill a fellow. <laughs> <laughs> know what characters they red need be red yeah go ahead <laughs> they need to add the characters from imperial assault the uh the, the original unique... characters yeah. yeah like it would be cool if they made their own original characters but like, what if they added the original characters from Imperial Assault? Jin, Gideon, uh... Cotoon Vinto. Virago. Give me Vinto. The best Star Vinto Wars character. Vina. Onar. Diala? Yep, Diala Pasil. Man... That would be it. so. I, um, I don't really buy like three D prints of stuff. But if somebody like designed all of STLs of those characters in this style at this scale, I might have to like do that. 
There's hearing a lot those of names them, takes me back. Yeah. Some names I've not heard in a long time. Long time. Going to switch to playing Republic next week. Have you been playing Separatists or Mandalorians or Vader? I mean, I just kind of want to go play with Kenobi again. I feel like Kenobi feels too good. He feels overpowered. But I just, like, he's one of my favorite characters. That's sort of my deal with this game. I'm like, well, I like this certain gameplay elements. I like, like, all the combinations with the Separatists. But I also just like these characters and the droids and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I want to play with Kenobi because I like Kenobi a bunch. Um, in that's just kind of like how I want to do this game. Like somebody popped into the Shatterpoint Discord. It's like, where should I start playing? Like what characters are like the best and like most optimal or whatever? I'm like, just, what? Just pick a Star Wars character you really like, put him in your team and go from there. Yeah, I think so for sure. With this game, more than any other, it's like, at least at this point, just buy whatever characters you think are cool. Right. With the exception of Obi later. with the exception of Obi Wan, who's not like an auto win by any means, like it doesn't feel like there's like you know, oh, this is the primo strategy and the primo build. It's like, well, just throw whatever together and it's gonna be fine. At least in my experience so far, it's all pretty the the kind of the random nature of the order deck and everybody has so much movement and stuff it all seems like you can just throw whatever together and you'll have fun maybe i haven't played enough yet yeah i'd be curious to hear i think some tournaments have finally kind of started to happen i'll be curious to hear if somewhat of a meta starts to develop like you said like what are kind of the best units that people haven't really put through their paces quite yet you know yeah not that i care from a perspective of wanting to know it so i can compete but just kind of out of curiosity to see like i'm always curious what the like what other people's experience ends up being because it's kind of wild sometimes how when you have some of these meta discussions other people will be like oh yeah that that character ship they suck I never got them to work or whatever. And other people be like, oh yeah, it's like unbeatable. It's, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's interesting to hear like w on average how different things are going. You yeah. Know? Especially when you like find out about like the big, big meta and you're like, oh, nobody in my not insignificantly sized local community does that at all. Yeah. I think like Mace is a good example for me when he comes out, he's, I don't know. I'm curious to see, does he end up being like super good or does he not quite come together? I think he's got a few cool abilities. I think the six point, he's only six points, right? That feels so. hard to build, but uh, I don't know. In fact, wait, let me think. Six points. Well, aren't the ARF troopers like two points? I think it was, I think his secondary is three, and I think the ARFs are also three. So oh, okay. you have to, at least right now, you'd have to use him with, with, I forget the guy's name. The Pons. You'd have to use him with his own, yeah, you'd have to use him with pawns, and then there's some other three points for support, but, but yeah, pawns is the only three point secondary, so you have to use him right now, and... There's nothing that you can use him with for a four point support because there's no two point secondary. So I think that's going to be rough. I mean, eventually there'll be more options, but right now, I don't know. It's, it's going to be hard to build around him a little bit. Okay, so there's Pons is the only three point. Uh, yeah, for sure. At, at, so far. So I guess, yeah, which leaves you with B1s, Magna Guards, or ARFs. 
I don't, I, a lot of times I don't even think about like the out of faction options just because I'm like not usually interested yeah, in yeah. building my teams that way. Yeah, I kind of wonder if like long term there will be, I mean, there's not necessarily a reason not to use cross faction stuff, but it's like it always feels like you're hampering yourself a little bit because you're not getting the combos right so like i wonder if we'll get anything long term that makes it more viable to use like mixed stuff you know what i mean like if someone had the right ability that made it feel less bad to pick some weird cross faction thing you know because i love when people come up with an interesting combo that's like oh yeah these two things do still work together even though they're not kind of the obvious pick or something you know yeah obviously that can be hard to balance too but like if you really wanted to build a mixed like republic and separatist like you have clones and droids in the same squad like what would make that feel like not a dumb choice <laughs> yeah you know. need you need somebody that like specifically buffs supporting characters without any other qualifications yeah because yeah. a lot of them are like oh well a supporting droid or supporting republic or whatever which mm -hmm. i don't know i like that it's designed like that because yeah it makes sense but bit more touching up on the statue while the wash is dried oh yeah luminara could be good cross faction yeah i feel like maybe it won't happen soon but at some point we're gonna hear about some tournament like a regional or something and everyone will be like whoa did you hear someone took this unit and this unit and they won the thing and everyone will be like what but those are not even the same faction their their keywords don't even work so how would you even use the abilities and they'll be like well this person didn't need those extra abilities that you know they got by with it turns out like these two combo so well that it doesn't matter that you're missing out on on all these other abilities or something you know there's going to be some like weird combo like that that is going to take everyone by surprise i bet Someday. Maybe. Once there's like more units, maybe. I feel like that... Oh, it turns out that this triggers after an attack, and so that means when you use these two together, you can like auto-kill something, and who cares that none of their other abilities never happen? <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, I feel like it's hard to like show up and surprise people like that, because there's so much like, as soon as you know, something is announced, people are testing it and playing it and stuff yeah okay he's looking real good good for what, two and a half hours yeah yeah definitely i like the base colors the statue like the textures really showing through so now I need to just highlight. The cape's gonna take a while to highlight. I like taking my time with capes. Highlighting capes is my favorite. But highlighting the like the dark gray parts of his body, probably not gonna spend too much time on that. It's gonna be mostly some edge highlights and stuff. see how much time I take with the light stuff because I like where some of the shade ended up but I want to do a bit of highlight here you want to keep going or should we call it a night oh gosh it's yeah been two and a half hours. Been this has been myself but this has been uh fun another successful painting hangout I appreciate 
Jason Prince and Imperial Buckethead and Remy B for popping in the chat and hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll it's probably nice to chat, get a little bit done. Unless we do this somehow more soon, the next one will not be until another month. We've only, we're only doing this once a month for now. For now. Now I gotta take down my streaming setup, which is uh, precarious. <laughs> I need to get one of those like boom things to put my camera over. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.